really? Let me show you guys my shirt. It, <laughs> but it has, one, I'm not wearing a bra. Two, it has like makeup and chocolate stains. It's a dinosaur and it, what does it say? You're doing a good job and your hair looks nice. The affirmation I needed today. Hi, it's Kendo here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up, Holmes Killer Biscuit? And happy Saturday. If you're new around here, you don't know, but Saturday is when I usually do something called Bad Movies in a Beat, the series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. However, as you can see, my makeup's already on. So that means that something's getting switched up today. By the way, my makeup is so cute. And it's always so cute when I'm like not filming. I think it's because I can focus. But today we're switching it up as you'd imagine, because today we're doing the long awaited, not that long awaited, literally only one person asked. I said, yeah, that was a pretty good idea. And maybe like three people were like, yeah, that's a good idea. So long awaited. <laughs> Bad movie tier video. Again, I have a whole series that will be linked up above about me going through terrible movies because it's one of my favorite things to do. And someone said, Kendall, you should make a whole friggin' tier list of the 50 plus films I have talked about over the course of having this series, over 50. And so today, that's what I'm gonna do. But if we are gonna go down this tedious rabbit hole of all of the worst movies that I've watched thus far, do you know what would make it even better? Wine, exactly. Today's video is sponsored by Bright Cellars, a monthly wine club that allows you to discover your new favorite wine for any food pairing or special occasion. And this is obviously the most special of all of them. I am personally on my like rich auntie discovery tour. <laughs> and one of the things I've been doing on my rich auntie discovery tour has been tasting and collecting wine. When I was younger, I kind of thought like, oh, wines kind of taste the same. There's white ones, there's red ones, there's dry, there's sweet. That's about it. And yo, no, I get it. Kind of get why people have like whole trips that they take to go tasting wine. I discovered like, oh, I do have like a particularized taste. And the cool thing about Bright Cellars is that they're able to hone in on what your tastes are based off of your preferences and other food, which I find very fascinating. There's a whole quiz experience and that's how they know what to send out to you. Um, I had no idea that you could know what type of wine I like based off of like the type of chocolate I eat. Wild, thought it was crazy. The first wine I tried was Dead Stars and Black Holes. Sounds like a Coldplay album. I obviously enjoyed it. Very good, quite citrusy. That you get these little cards that tell you like the notes in the wine. So this is like a grapefruit, lemon, green apple, pineapple, like perfume, like how they do perfume. And that's pretty spot on, really crisp, really nice. And today we're gonna look at Meat Cute. The bottle's cute. I'm definitely um, judging this book by its cover. Cute is a California French, you about to play me, Colombard with notes of lime zest, lemon, grapefruit, and honey. Why am I trying to do this seated? This is my fault. Mm. Cheers. Ooh, ooh, what is that? That's lemon, okay. Well, they put pairings on it with food. Yeah, I was gonna say this would taste bomb with like a salmon. I have salmon in my refrigerator. That's gonna be dinner. Uh, shrimp ceviche with lime and chili, grilled chicken sandwiches. This is nice. It's a little drier than I expected considering it has honey in it, but that's really good. So I'm gonna be sipping on this throughout this video. So feel free to check out Bright Sellers down below. They're giving away 50% off of your first six bottle box. That was hard to say. Big thanks again to Bright Sellers for sponsoring today's video and helping me through this garbage that I'm about to sit through. <laughs> so when making this tier list, I did struggle with how I would even, with how to qualify what makes a movie bad. Like I've kind of said ad nauseum over the course of doing this series that movies can be bad for a lot of different reasons. And they're not always just bad because of bad acting or bad lighting or even technicality. It could be logistic fudge ups, morally questioning as I notice, a lot of them tend to be. It could be just boring. And I decided that I'm gonna do a tier focus more so on watchability because there are some awful movies in here that I will watch over and over and over again. <laughs> so the tiers go as follows. Most watchable to least watchable. So we have awful, please watch. <laughs> for the movies that are so inexplicably bad that it must be shared with the masses. Next is, this one ain't even that bad. These are movies that are referred to as bad um, that I generally don't agree with. And also, by the way, this isn't all the movies in the playlist. I have done movies that are 
I consider good. So any movie that I consider good, except for bad hair, bad hair went in this. <laughs> for the most part are not in this, but I have so few of those that it's not even important. They all go in the same bad movies in a B playlist. Next up, we have bad, but we love the content. So movies that aren't very good, but they made for really good bad movies in a B. Usually there's so much material that I can't say, wow, that was terrible. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, I can, <laughs> but I have a warm place in my heart for it because the jokes just come full circle. It's so easy. Next one is meh, but worth talking about. Um, and that could be because it has a moral of which we should like unpack or usually something that's quite morally questionable that we should unpack, but the movie itself isn't very great. Often forgettable movies, I think more so. Next is not even worth watching. Um, that means it's not funny, it's not entertaining, you can't get anything from it, it was a waste of my time. And then we have, all my eyes, turn it off, which is just never again. That I cannot muster the strength to go through any longer. All right, so let's get started. First we have Swiped. Okay, we're starting off, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Swiped, if you don't recall, is a movie that's basically written by like a 60 year old woman who's basically demonizing women for wanting sex. It's super like misogynistic and awful. It also has Noah apparently never gonna be without a job Centineo, which automatically puts it at least at a meh. <laughs> I'm gonna put it out a not even worth watching. It really wasn't. It, it's not even much of a talk piece outside of just yes old women sometimes be misogynistic, oftentimes are. As far as like watchability, there isn't much. Um, it, it's just not a very good movie. Next up, we have The Kissing Booth. Ugh. Let me just warn you guys, anything that tends to be very focused on teenagers outside of movies that were around when I was a teenager, so your Twilights and stuff where I have like this, as much as I hate them, there is like a nostalgia factor there. Anything that's like teenager-y, I largely don't care. <laughs> the only reason I talk about them at all is because I feel like there is something to talk about, you know, for my viewers who happen to be around that age. I feel like there's a lot of morals to, that can come out of those films. But as far as like actually watching them, I don't very much so enjoy them. Especially it's super corny and very long. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna just put it in meh but worth talking about because again, there is something to talk about there. Next up is Velocipaster. Okay, so if you, don't, if you didn't see that video, Velocipaster is about a pastor who turns into a dinosaur and starts fighting ninjas. Um, I'm not gonna, I mean, what more can I say? I was gonna say, I'm not gonna speak ad nauseum about that. You can watch the video, but what more can I really say about that? Um, definitely bad, but we love content. <laughs> to me, I don't think it's, as awful to say you must watch this. <laughs> I don't think that makes it like S tier, but it's definitely like something to like put on as like a joke in the background with your friends, like you need something to watch. Okay, next up we have 365 or 365 days, <laughs> the very high budget Polish porno, which is about a woman who gets kidnapped by an Italian sexy dom, mafia dude in Italy and he gives her 365 days to fall in love with him. Movie, trash, but there was a lot to unpack. There was a lot to unpack. So I'm definitely gonna put that in um, in bad, but we love the content. Also, again, as with a lot of these like super steamy sexual movies that are often terrible, there's so much comedy. <laughs> there's so much comedy there usually. Should I just get all the Twilights out of the way? Actually, let's go back to the Kissing Booth. Kissing Booth 2 is also in a similar vein. I don't know, I'm struggling because I want to put it in meh, but worth talking about. But there's also like a, it's not even worth watching type of thing. I'll put them both in meh, but worth talking about. Now let's just go through the entire Twilight series. The first Twilight, oh my God, not even worth watching. It is, <laughs> it is so bad. I've always hated that movie. The movie is trash and it always has been. And it's so ugly to look at. The moon was meh, it was okay. Oh no, I put that in the love bad, but we love the content. I think this one's more so in worth talking about for new moon. My bad, because there was a lot about a uh, trigger warning, a lot about self harm and endangering oneself um, that I really needed to talk about. Eclipse. Yeah, I mean, Eclipse was it was OK as a movie, but I don't think it's good enough to say it ain't that bad. <laughs> it's a very like I don't even remember if there's anything like. Well, there is some 
things worth talking about in the movie. First, Twilight Breaking Dawn. It had her demon baby in it. That makes it worth talking about in and of itself. Not in like some big moralist. Well, there is a little bit that's very like <laughs> pro-life torture porn about it. Um, but for the most part, it's a very forgettable movie. But the last one, oh my God, awful. Please watch it. That fight scene was hilarious. That whole movie peak. Please watch it. It's that bad. Not in like, oh my God, my eyes, like, please watch it. But you have to watch all the other ones to kind of know what's happening. So if you don't at all know the story of Twilight, I don't know if it's worth watching all those other movies to get to that point. But if you know the story and you've never seen it, definitely worth watching. Next up, we have The Roommate. It's about a girl who starts to get obsessed over her roommate and chaos kind of commences from there. Definitely not worth watching. <laughs> if you've seen one like stalker movie, you've seen that one. It's, it's not, <laughs> it's not worth it. Bratz, no. I and I also have no nostalgia associated with that movie. I was a big Bratz like fan. Like the, the dolls loved it, Passion for Fashion. They had some bomb ass music. Tell me stories, paint a picture, hang it in the sky, in the sky. Tell no lies and keep no secrets. They was killing it. But yeah, the movie's not worth watching. Mm. <laughs> okay, all right, so we're up to Neo Ned. <laughs> Um, I'm struggling because I don't know where to put this one. If you don't know what Neonet is, it's the film with Gabrielle Union, a white supremacist, a neo-Nazi who falls in love with a black woman who believes that Hitler resides within her when they meet at a psych ward. I'm struggling because part of me thinks it's so bad that I kind of want people to watch it. But I also believe the thing that's more interesting than the movie is the content, like what we can talk about. Well, he's a neo-Nazi. He doesn't deserve to be on top of anything. So he's gonna go to meh. Uh, next is Birdemic. Oh my God, awful. Please watch. <laughs> what Birdemic is. It is a, oh man, essentially it's, it's the passion project of a deluded man who made a film that was supposed to be somewhat like uh, Hitchcock's The Birds. It is so delusionally bad. It's a lightning strike of which um, so few films are able to really get because you can tell this person was so sincere when they made this movie. Again, an intangible way, um, unlike any other. So I definitely want everyone <laughs> to watch that movie. Feel free to watch my video on it if you wanna kinda know the lore behind it. Hilarious, please watch it. Santa Jaws, uh, it's about a Santa themed shark at Christmas. Um, it's not really worth watching. It's not that interesting. Wasn't really that great for content either. Same with Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. <laughs> but it's not in the like, it's so bad, I hate it. It's well, I do, I do. I couldn't really make it through that one actually now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I'm gonna put that to, oh, my eyes, turn it off. Yeah, I actually really didn't like that movie. There were some parts that were mildly funny, but overall it was a, it was a pretty painful experience. All right, next up we have the first after, not even worth watching. It was not very good. I don't even think in my video, I really explained a lot about the specifics of the movie because it wasn't really that interesting. You know, it's very formulaic. A good girl falls for the bad guy and gets her heart broken and she breaks up with them at the end of the movie. Now, the sequel <laughs> called After We Collided Hey, oh, that is going straight up to awful. Please watch. My God. <laughs> I have never, I mean, it's not like it had a lot to go off of in the first film, but I feel like they just gave up in such a, in such a massive way by the time they got to the second one. They were very well aware, we're here to make a sex movie for 19 year old. We don't need, <laughs> We don't need all this other stuff. We're not trying to make a respectable film. Let's not even go there. So I kind of appreciate that. It's really funny. I, I don't even know really how to explain it. It's their relationship coming back together, but it's again, so badly acted that it's worth taking time out of your day for it. Rubber, uh, rubber is about a, a killer tire, a tire that kills people by blowing up their heads with its mind. The film itself isn't that interesting. I would give it like a bad, but we love the content. It made a decent video. I think that's about it. I don't think it, I think it's something that's worth showing to your friends because of the ludicrous nature of it, but that's 
that's about it. Uh, I do also appreciate that in the beginning of the film, it does like a whole like anti art people cop out in the beginning, obliterates all of the like art people rhetoric and just says, sit here and watch a damn movie about a tire blowing people up with their, with its mind. And I, I respect that. Fatal Affair, oh my God, it's another psycho stalker. Again, similar to the roommate, but this time it's like a woman and her ex from college reunite like 20 years later and now he's obsessed with her even though she's married and has kids and stuff it's a eh, it's a waste of movie Ooh, a fall from grace that movie is really bad but i don't think it's quite awful enough to put it at like so awful that you have to watch it it is pretty freaking bad it's about a it's a tyler perry film let's start off there so that's not <laughs> That's not looking great. But then beyond that, it's like about a woman who fell in love with this younger man and he ended up scamming her and taking all her money and she killed him and now she's on trial for his murder and twists and turns and yada yada. And it's not very good. It's not very well uh, made at all. Uh, I think Tyler Perry was going on and on about how he made it in five days as if that's a good thing. <laughs> um, I'm gonna put it in bad, but we love the content. I think it made a decent video. Teeth. <sighs> I have a love hate relationship with teeth. I kind of enjoy it. Teeth, if you don't know, is about a woman, well, a girl, she's like a high schooler who has uh, teeth in her vagina. Basically throughout the course of the movie, she's using it to chop off appendages of uh, men who were trying to sexually assault her. I personally like the idea of that. So, but you know what? I'm gonna put this one in. This one ain't even that bad. <laughs> like the movie isn't great. It's not great, but it's not that bad. Like it, it's, it's again, something worth showing to people. Now through the course of me doing this series, I've been doing it for about two years. I have still, a little less than two years, I have still yet to find a movie quite like Cats. Again, I recently had a friend of mine watch it for the first time and this was her watching it at home and she sent me voice notes sobbing. <laughs> like she had never felt such disdain and it's an unspeakable and indescribable experience, especially if you didn't see it in theaters. I saw it in theaters. Um, I f what is it about? Movie adaptation of the, of the musical Cats. It's still hands down the worst movie I've ever seen. I almost don't even wanna put the tomatoes on the same level as this because even they're both bad in a way that I have no interest in watching again, but I don't think y'all understand how viscerally Cats affected me. It made my fight or flight go haywire. I almost left a friend of mine in the theater. Like I was gonna, I was gonna leave. <laughs> and it's not because of anything strange like gore or, or even anything super obscene and outrageous. It's just, it's still to this day. Next up we have Splice, uh, <laughs> which is uh, a movie I have a weird nostalgic attachment to, which is partially why it's gonna go to this one ain't even that bad. It's about, it's a science fiction movie. Uh, and I think the reason people wanted me to talk about it is because it is, it's weird. It's a weird one. Um, basically it's about this couple that want to create a human and it ends up being this weird like alien human crossbreed type thing. It's weird and it's gross, but it's not a bad movie. It's, it's, it's fucked <laughs> though. Dangerous Lies. Oh my God, this one was so forgettable. It's definitely like, I don't even, I, yeah, I don't even remember really what it's about. Uh, I know it's a Netflix movie. I think it's the one where this couple get money from an old man that died. I don't know. It's a very forgettable movie. Deadly Illusions. This is one of the more recent, uh, I think that was what I did last week, right? It's about, a. Uh, well, on the surface is about an older woman, maybe in her 40s, 50s, who ends up having this really gross uh, attraction to her nanny, who she has this weird like mother dom type interaction with less than ideal representation of mental health. All of the like psycho, psycho ones are have it in some degree or another, but this one's particularly uh, distasteful. I think it's worth talking about because there's a lot to unpack there, particularly about how people don't think women can be predators. <laughs> um, I think there's a lot to unpack there. Ooh, Neil Breen, baby, Faithful Findings, yes. <laughs> 
if you needed me to say what that movie is about, uh, Neil Breen has a project, and people were saying, Kendall, you need to come back to it. I've literally only done one Neil Breen, who's the director, creator, lead actor. He does everything, thinks of himself as Jesus, essentially. Um, he has so many movies. I've yet to get around to all of them. I really should. <laughs> Remarkable, terrible. Highly recommend it. Okay, we're at the 50 shades. I've only done two out of three of the 50 shades of gray and they're, they're both bad, but definitely bad in a way that elicits a lot of content. And I appreciate that. If you don't know what 50 shades of gray is, you don't need to, it's a sex movie. <laughs> it's you seen one, you seen them all, but the, you know, billionaire dates like a, an innocent virgin and have a abusive relationship, but they put a soundtrack on it. So it's like loving and also like a movie that introduced a bunch of 50 year old wine moms to BDSM. So there's that. I didn't need to be introduced, I already knew. <laughs> Not personally. I wish, okay. Hype Nation Hip Hop Sagikun or Hype Nation 3D. It's a Korean movie that's hella racist. Um, it's also trying to tie together a bunch of references to famous movies from around the world. Um, and it does so very poorly, but beyond that, it, the thing that sticks out to me mostly as a black woman is how racist it is. But there is a lot to talk about in regards to the infantilization of anti-black Korean people that I've discovered over the years in regards to me being a K-pop fan when I was younger. And I think it's a very important conversation to have. Anti-blackness in Asian communities and also how that translates into anti-Asian-ness as well, because there's this like infantilization of Asian people as if they have no agency and no, <laughs> in regards to how they engage with the world. I find it very, very frustrating and disrespectful to both parties. Uh, so yeah, the movie's bad. So it doesn't even deserve really to be in meh, but worth talking about. It honestly is bad enough to go into, oh, my eyes turn it off. But I think the conversation is more important than the movie itself, so. Also, I am sweating. I am a lightweight these days. That was what, four ounces? Yeah, this is 11.2. This should not be hitting me like this. Skins, Pieles, the Spanish film about uh, various people with physical deformities just trying to make it, but how people often tell you about it by saying there's one person with a butthole for a mouth. I can't believe, yeah, it, it's definitely a please watch. I. If you can make it through that first few minutes, which are really, really, really uncomfortable, I think it's worth watching. There are some triggering things in it. If you don't think you can make it through it, maybe watch my video to kind of like ease into it. It has a weird quality that makes you really wanna share it. Doki, next up we have Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter. This is leading towards my eyes cause I didn't really even like it, but it's it, it's in a similar way as like Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. It's just like, like just a myriad of nonsense just and it's boring. It's like, okay, yeah, now another weird thing. Oh, well, it's about Jesus Christ being a vampire hunter. Jutopia. It's definitely not even worth watching. It's super just problematic and offensive to everyone. It's so bad that I even regret even making a video about it, to be honest with you. Like if I, th that's definitely one that could have um, stayed in the drafts. That was, <laughs> next was John Henry, which is one of the less referred to mov movie reviews I've done. It definitely got demonetized because of violence um, in particular. I think it's worth watching. Cause it, again, it's bad in a way that's hard to describe and I really need people to watch it to understand why it's so bad. What is it even about? Uh, it's, about it's about a guy played by um, Ace Coon. What's his name? <laughs> Terry Crews, played by Terry Crews. I think when that movie came out, we didn't, it was before like he sh was showing himself. Uh, <laughs> so I think I was a little bit more charitable towards him as a person. Yeah, it's about a guy who ends up helping these random, were they Colombian children? I don't remember. They were like foreign children from like South America or Central America or somewhere. And he ended up helping these kids and it was just not very good. It, but it was, it's a lot more to it, but also nothing at all to it. It's bad. But I think again, in a similar way as all of these other movies on awful, please watch it. It's it's bad in a way that's hard to describe. Um, <laughs> Ooh, Killer Bean Forever. This is not a bad movie. Screw y'all. This is. <laughs> It's an animated movie. I think it might be the only animated movie I've done. One guy made a whole like action movie about coffee beans and it's so funny and so stupid. 
I like that. <laughs> and I know we made a sequel, and it's like one guy animating, so you could tell this dude like really, he had a lot of passion for it. And I, I love it. That's a good movie. Ugh, <laughs> ma. Oh Lord. Okay. An older woman who ends up becoming like obsessed over these teenagers because she's trying to like relive her teenage years and get back at her bullies. And it becomes this like really weird, awfully written, awfully acted off. Oh, it's so bad. Oh, I'm struggling. I think it's definitely awful. Please watch. Oh, and I saw it in theaters and it was so funny with everybody like around you. Also one of my favorite Bad Movies in a Beat episodes. That was towards the beginning. <laughs> wow, there's a lot of awful please watches. Hatto gimmick, boy meets girl. Hot gimmick, boys me boy meets girl. That, that, what? That movie is just unspeakably bad. I don't even know what it's about. What they say it's about, what they say it's about. I don't know if this is what it's actually about. What they say it's about. It's about a girl who gets blackmailed by this guy into being his slave. But there's so much going on in that movie. And you thought that was a lot. There's so much going on in that movie. And it's so bad. <laughs> Please, what? it's, it's, Again, it's one of those movies that's just like unlike anything I've ever seen. And I highly recommend it. Sierra Burgess is a loser. Burgess Burgess is a loser. It's pretty forgettable. I kind of want to put it in not even worth watching. But if I remember correctly, there was quite a conversation to be had about uh, Sierra Burgess being essentially a, an incel. <laughs> Basically like how everybody has done her wrong because she's unattractive as opposed to her just being and then she gets no repercussions for being like that. I wouldn't hate it as much if yes, she was this terrible person, but at the end of it, there was truly like her growing, someone sitting her down and being like, bitch, what? <laughs> You're not entitled. She's also like kind of rapey too. Like <sighs> this one about to make me mad. Uh... <laughs> Netflix's Death Note movie based not at all off of the Japanese manga and anime of which I love deeply and they f***ed it over by completely ruining the point of making that anime. It is, ooh, it's definitely, it's definitely, um, it's up there with cats, but in a different way, it's infuriating. It's supposed to be about a genius who gets, well, if you've ever seen Death Note, the, the anime, it has a, a, a loose, relationship with that but it's not at all like that and i and it is besmirched the name of death note my favorite anime um it's about a genius kid who discovers this notebook that if you write in the notebook that person will die everyone involved should never be allowed to oh but oh lakeith stanfield is in it except for lakeith stanfield he shouldn't be held responsible but everybody else should be held responsible for even participating in that after <laughs> after burn after shock definitely going to bad but we love content it's a passion flicks film which i really need to make more reviews on movies on that if you don't know what passion flicks is it's basically like a netflix where they turn your favorite romance novels into crappy low budget film wonderful so bad <laughs> but it's bad but it Wait, the more I say that, I almost want to put it in awful please watch because it's not very well known. Yeah, we gonna put this in awful please watch. It's really bad. Next up is Bad Hair. Uh, that's not even that bad of a movie and my whole video was basically defending it. It's a Hulu original film about, a, uh, it's set in the, I want to say late eighties, early nineties with a black woman who decided to get her first weave and it ended up having magical powers and killing people. There are parts about it that aren't uh, great. I think towards the end, it kind of loses itself. It's not a perfect film, but it's not that bad. And I, you know, even all the criticisms that I want to give for it, a lot of them I can explain through proxy of how the film was made. It was made to look like a dated film. Yeah, Psycho Stripper, the same actor that was in After Burn After Shock is in Psycho Stripper. It's a Lifetime movie about a psycho stripper. Eh, bad, but content. It's, you know, I do like a stupid ass psycho stalker movie. I'm not gonna lie. I, I'm not above it. <laughs> it's a Lifetime movie. <laughs> if you've seen one, you've seen them all. Next up is Tracers, that other movie with Taylor Lautner in it that wasn't Twilight or that one film that he did that was really bad. What was it called? Abduction or something? That should be on the list too. Uh, it's, uh, 
It's very forgettable. <laughs> it's a lot of parkour. If you like watching people do parkour, then okay. Whew. Okay, Showgirls. If you've never seen Showgirls, it is a classic bad movie, rightfully so. Wow, it. I get it why it has a cult cult following because it, it is one of those things you drink wine and, and watch with your friends to ridicule. It's so bad that I want to rip my eyes out. I think I'm gonna put it with awful please watch though. Mind you, there is a very aggressive sexual assault scene at the end. It's a mid 90s movie about a girl who moves from someplace quote out east to go to Vegas and wants to become a showgirl. Um, and it's her like climbing her way up to the top. <sighs> It's one of the more challenging movies to really talk about because it's bad in such a way, in a way similar to Cats in that it's bad in a way that's almost intangible. And I think the thing about it is it has a very unique quality of being so bad because it was trying to be so good. I think the thing that's very interesting about it, and, it, and I've kind of talked about this before, it was bad in a way that I struggle to even uh, understand fully even now, and I've seen it more times since then because again, it does have this weird rewatchable quality. I've settled on at this juncture because I feel like my thoughts around the movie keep changing because I don't, I don't know how to wrap my head around it. I've kind of taken on the thought process of this one person that I saw that was kind of talking about it because I got to watch a whole documentary afterwards. I was like, what the f What was the word choice that somebody said in that documentary? It was like, is it a piece of sh is it a masterpiece? Well, it's a masterpiece of shit. And I feel like that is truly the most accurate way to describe that movie. If I wanted to, I could sit there and really make a case for it, I feel like now, but I'm not going to, I don't care enough to do that. A uh, killer sofa. It's about a killer sofa. I think it, it belongs in like bad, but we love the content. Uh, it's definitely not, I mean, it's not as bad as like any of the other killer inanimate objects. I feel like it's very rubber adjacent. It's ludicrous, it's stupid. It has its place, it has its moments. Uh, <laughs> the room, all right, Tommy. Our guy Tommy was so definitely going into awful, please watch. It is, if you ask me to say what the movie's about, I genuinely can't, I think. <laughs> it's kind of about a guy and his relationship with this girl, but if you've ever seen it, that truly doesn't do justice. <laughs> it's so bad, and it's something that I want everyone to see at least once in their life, so please do. My Teacher, My Obsession, aka Dad Crush. It's about a uh, high school senior that becomes like a stalker to her. Very buff teacher. You know what you're getting, and also when you know the two people, it's like, eh, it's gotta be trash. But eh, it's something to watch. <laughs> Ninja Assassin. I, this one was quite con controversial. Ninja Assassin is a movie that I hold close to my heart that I've always hated, but I watch every time it was on because I felt like I had to support Rain because I was a K-pop fan. It's about a ninja who's an assassin. It's gory, it's entertainment, I guess, but I genuinely don't like this movie. <laughs> I, I watched it a lot because Rain was shirtless and I liked his music, so that's why I watched it. But honestly, I could just watch other things of Rain being shirtless and making music, so. Secret Obsession, oh my God. Another Psycho Stalker movie, this one about a guy who lies to a woman that he's her husband after she gets amnesia. But there is a lot to talk, there's so much to, nah, no, no, it's not really. Recipe for Seduction, the 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 Lifetime X KFC romantic short Mario Lopez <laughs> as KFC's founder Colonel Sanders. I think I mean it's 15 minutes. Come on, you can you can spare 15 minutes for Daddy Sanders. We're down to the last five. Ooh, okay. Sharknado. It's a shark-filled tornado. Yeah. It's not worth watching. Oh, the movie that started it all. Tall Girl, the story of a tall girl written by a guy who's like 4'11", I looked it up. As a tall girl, for those of you that don't know, I am six feet tall. I resonated not at all with this girl for most things. Outside of being a tall girl and being like the target for very short men, but that's about it. The whole movie is about how a pretty tall, thin, white, uh, apparently wealthy young girl is the most oppressed person in her school by being 6'1". <laughs> and she is the odd one out 
because of that, which I find so stupid. Again, I'm six feet tall. I come from a family of six feet tall women. Um, more. I mean, the closest thing that was at all representative, quote unquote, or in any way relatable to my existence as a very tall woman was like, yeah, there's some guys that are insecure about you being tall, but like, that's just the guys you don't date. <laughs> It weeds them out, in my opinion, but okay. And it, it it rocketed this series and it holds a special place in my heart, but I don't think it belongs anything beyond it was good for content. Blech. Thanks killing. No, no, it's not worth watching. I kind of want to put it in my eyes. Mm, no, it's just not worth watching. It's about a turkey uh, who comes back to kill all the white people every 500 years for Thanksgiving. Oh God. The last airbender. I hope, I know it's not true and I know it won't ever be true, but I hope somewhere M. Night Shyamalan cries himself to sleep. Ooh, if you don't, if you never, <laughs> sorry, I'm about to lose my mind. The last airbender is the M. Night Shyamalan adaptation of the very popular and very well done Nickelodeon show, Avatar, The Last Airbender. In an attempt to combine 26 or so episodes of the first season into one two hour movie, he just decided to just talk about all these things happening instead of showing them in the movie and disrespectful. It was such a waste of time. If I had not vaguely remembered what Avatar the, the Last Airbender was even about, I would have been so confused. Also, they switched out all the like tan characters that were often like main characters for white people. And then all the bad people who were like often quite pale in the show, turn them into dark skinned people. So that was fun, Shyamalan. And last but not least, in a very cyclical way, we return to the movie that started my love of bad movies. That is The Man in 3B. Oh man, um, definitely uh, go into bad, but we love the content. It's, what is it about? It's, it's about a bunch of stuff. It's about essentially a woman who falls in love with her neighbor when her husband is about to go to jail. Um, it's bad. There's a lot of foolishness in there. It's very Tyler Perry-esque and it's not very good, but it did, again, much like in a tall girl kind of way, sparked, sparked a fire in me. So it holds a special place in my heart. All right, and with that said, that my friends is the tier list. What do you guys think? Is this how you would have organized it? And with that said, I'm signing off. Big thanks again to Bright Sellers for sponsoring today's video. Again, if you would like to check out anything from them, that'll be down in the description box. If you like this video, feel free to like this video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram, Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. Are there any other bad movies that you think I should look at? Feel free to put those down in the comment section as well. And I will see you guys next time.